Ryzen's now one month old, but boy, has it been a long, long four weeks. Day one impressions were good though, early testing hiccups aside, productivity performance right out of the gate was exceptional, so much so that we ditched Tim's old Intel editing rig, and rather than go with a Broadwell eCPU like I did with my system almost a year ago now, we opted for the much more sensible Ryzen 7 1700. So why has it been a long four weeks, I hear you ask? Well, in a word, gaming. Yes, Ryzen's gaming performance isn't quite as amazing as the productivity stuff when compared to Intel's KB Lake and Broadwell eCPUs. That said, it's certainly not bad either, as noted in my initial Ryzen review. These AMD CPUs deliver an incredibly smooth gaming experience. Some games work better than others, and we did find the odd title where Ryzen was taking the fight to Intel and even beating them. Still, with gaming somewhat underwhelming and productivity so overwhelmingly impressive, the internet went to hyperdrive to try and find out why. Fingers were pointed at the Windows 10 scheduler, motherboard BIOSes, Windows 10 updates, SMT, Ryzen CCX design, DDR4 memory, and most recently Nvidia's GPUs. The Windows 10 scheduler turned out not to be an issue, and this was confirmed by AMD themselves. It's true that the pre-release BIOS versions did have some performance issues, but by the time Ryzen landed in the hands of consumers, those were all sorted, at least on the half dozen or so various motherboards I have. There also hasn't been a magical Windows 10 update quietly pushed out that improves performance. Nvidia's DX12 implementation does appear to be causing performance issues for Ryzen, though I believe this is an optimization issue, given that it doesn't impact Intel at the same clock speed. Anyway, this is something we'll have to watch over the coming weeks. Now, DDR4 memory is the big one. Rumour has it Ryzen responds really well to faster memory. Unusually so, I'm told, because of the way it ties in with the Infinity Fabric. I have heard claims that running DDR4 3600 memory enables Ryzen 7 CPUs to overtake the Core i7 7700K in a number of games, even with the KB Lake chip heavily overclocked. That's pretty incredible if true. Unfortunately, getting DDR4 3600 memory to work with Ryzen right now is extremely difficult, and even if you do manage this difficult feat, you are likely going to be met with a whole host of technical issues, issues such as cold boot failures for example. The good news is DDR4 3200 is now pretty easy to achieve with the right memory and motherboard. Providing you do have the right gear, it's very stable and doesn't suffer any reliability issues. Previously, testing on this channel was conducted using DDR4 2933 memory. So how much difference does low latency DDR4 3200 memory make? And perhaps more importantly, does Ryzen scale better with faster memory than say KB Lake? First up we have the most uneventful results and I thought we might as well just get these out of the way first. Evidently Mass Effect Andromeda is GPU bound even at 1080p using the GTX 1080 Ti with the ultra quality settings enabled. I included it for the simple fact that this is a new game and we have seen some nice performance from Ryzen in this title. So the orange bars show the Ryzen 7 1800X clocked at 4GHz using various memory speeds ranging from 2133 to 3200. Matched at every step of the way is the 7700K, also at 4GHz, to see how the memory scaling compares. Finally, for the DDR4-3200 configuration, I have also tested the 7700K at 4.8GHz for a few reasons. One is to keep the Intel fans at bay, underclocking the 7700K, even if we aren't interested in comparing CPU performance, gets them all in a tiz. The main reason I did this though was to work out when we're running into a GPU bottleneck, more on this shortly. Anyway, looking at the results, we see that once Ryzen is paired with DDR4 2666 memory, it's pretty much hitting full stride in this title, and the same is true for the 7700K. Deus Ex Mankind Divided was tested using DX11 to try and avoid the Ryzen slash Nvidia DX12 issue. Even so, performance looks a lot worse than you would expect given Ryzen's productivity performance, so you would have to assume some sort of optimization work needs to be done for this title. Anyway, for now that's not our concern, how does Ryzen's memory performance scale? Using DDR4 2133 memory, the 7700K is 10% faster, and that margin is slightly reduced to 7% with the DDR4 2666 memory. However, once we reach DDR4 2933, things go in the complete opposite direction, and quickly. Now the 7700K is 16% faster. Moving to DDR4 3200, this margin is further extended to 21% as the Ryzen 7 1800X hits a wall just shy of 100 FPS on average. The Intel chip wasn't done either, it was good for another 9% performance once overclocked to 4.8GHz. 
Grand Theft Auto 5 is getting on now, but it still taxes modern CPUs quite heavily. Using DDR4 2133 memory on both CPUs, we see that the 7700K delivered 16% more frames. This margin was reduced to 13% with DDR4 2666, 9% with DDR4 2933, and then just 6% with DDR4 3200. So the faster clocked memory is helping AMD recover ground in this title. That said, if we avoid underclocking the 7700K and instead overclock it to 4.8 GHz, that margin using the DDR4-3200 memory blows out to 27%. So while Ryzen is scaling nicely with faster memory, I can't see DDR4-3600 allowing Ryzen to match an overclocked 7700K, unfortunately. Battlefield 1 also shows positive memory scaling for AMD, though the reason here is down to a GPU limitation. The 7700K enjoys a 12% advantage over Ryzen when using DDR4 2133 memory, though I should note that it's only when looking at the average frame rate. The minimum frame rate performance for Ryzen has always been very good in Battlefield 1, and we see that again here. Anyway, moving to DDR4 2666, the margin remains much the same. It's reduced to just 11%, but that's margin of error stuff. The margin does start to shrink for the 2933 configurations, though this isn't because Ryzen is getting a bigger boost from the faster memory, rather it's because the 7700K is now finding the limits of the GTX 1080 Ti at 163 FPS. Moving to DDR4 3200, the 7700K is now seriously GPU bound, and this allows the 1800X to catch up as the Intel CPU is now just 4% faster. Proving that we are 100% GPU bound here is the 4.8 GHz 7700K configuration, which is only able to improve on the 0.1% and 1% results. Now we have Hitman. Starting at DDR4 2133, the 7700K was on average 16% faster, though I should note the minimum frame rates were similar. Upping the memory speed to 2666 reduced the margin, and now the 7700K was just 11% faster. Yet like what was seen in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Ryzen seems to run out of steam, and jumping to DDR4 2933 provided just a few extra frames. This meant that the 7700K was able to pull away once again, now delivering 16% more performance. As we hit DDR4 3200, the 7700K continues to pull away. Much like a Mercedes with DRS assist on a Honda powered McLaren down the straight at Monza. Yeah, no need to check the mirrors. Mafia 3 has been a bit of an AMD Ryzen special, so I wanted to make sure it was included in this test. Here we can see that Ryzen scales quite aggressively with memory frequency in this title. The 7700K was 13% faster with DDR4 2133, 10% faster with DDR4 2666, and 7% faster with DDR4 2933. After that though, we run into another GPU bottleneck and the showdown ends prematurely, as the 7700K is just 4% faster now. Overclocking the 7700K to 4.8 GHz provides no extra performance. Focusing on the average frame rates, we see that with DDR4 2133 memory, the 7700K is actually 3% slower than the 1800X in Watch Dogs 2. The 2666 and 2933 averages are much the same, though the 7700K does offer better minimum frame rate performance. The margins are pretty well nullified at DDR4 3200 though. We could be seeing a GPU bottleneck here as the overclocked 7700K at 4.8 GHz didn't really deliver the kind of boost you would expect it to. For testing Overwatch, I spectate a 12 player easy bot match for 5 minutes using the Zara Hero. This is a really accurate and CPU intensive benchmark, though it does take quite a lot of time as I do still take the average from 3 runs. Anyway, the 7700K was 5% faster when using DDR4 2133, 8% faster with 2666, 7% faster with 2933, and 7% faster with DDR4 3200. So for the first time we see fairly even memory scaling across the board for both CPUs. Ashes of the Singularity Escalation was tested in the DX12 mode using the latest build optimised for Ryzen. Here we see something we haven't seen before. Check this out, using DDR4 2133 memory, the 7700K was 7% 7 faster and then just 3% faster with the 2666 memory. Okay, so we've seen that before, but what we haven't seen is Ryzen hitting the lead with DDR4 2933 memory. The 7700K is now 2% slower. Finally, with DDR4 3200 memory, the 7700K is now 7% 7 slower, and therefore the 1800X enjoys a 7% performance advantage. It is possible for the 7700K to reclaim the lead once overclocked, but that's not really what we're interested in for this test. 
Before wrapping things up, I just wanted to see how much of an impact my shiny new G-Skill Flare X CL14 memory was having on performance. Some of you have told me that Ryzen doesn't respond that well to memory timings and was instead more responsive to memory frequency. Although I did only test one game in Ashes of the Singularity, this does appear to be true. Granted, this isn't conclusive evidence, but I would have thought performance would start to fall away once you start using CL20 timings if Ryzen was timing sensitive. So as always with Ryzen, we found some interesting results. Based on my findings, it looks like Ryzen does indeed perform better with faster memory. Not really a shocker though, is it? In fact, for the most part, Ryzen scales fairly typically when compared to the KB Lake Core i7 7700K. Games such as Overwatch show similar scaling across the board when comparing Ryzen and KB Lake, pretty much what I was expecting to see. I then saw some strange behaviour in Deus Ex Mankind Divided and Hitman, where the 1800X briefly caught up when moving from DDR4 2133 to 2666, but then fell well behind when increasing the memory speed further. There is clearly something else limiting Ryzen's performance in these titles. Ryzen did scale very nicely in Grand Theft Auto V, and with DDR4 3200 it did close the gap on the 7700K to be just 5% slower. It's possible with DDR4 3600 memory that the 1800X could have matched the 7700K with both CPUs clocked at 4GHz, but I can't really see it winning by anything more than what would fall under the margin of error heading. That said, we did see the 1800X take charge in Ashes of the Singularity Escalation, at least with both CPUs clocked at 4GHz. Again, this wasn't really a CPU comparison, rather 7700K was included to see if Ryzen does scale better with faster memory in relation to an Intel CPU. In Ashes, it certainly does, coming from 6FPS down to lead by 7FPS at the same clock speed. Like most things we've tested so far pertaining to Ryzen's performance, memory frequency isn't a silver bullet. It certainly helps to maximise Ryzen's performance, no doubt about that, but it doesn't always help catch the speedy Intel quad cores. To say that arming Ryzen with DDR4 3600 memory will see it match or even beat the 7700K in most games is a massive stretch. So as I've been saying for a few weeks now, the real gains are going to be seen via software updates, namely game optimizations, like what we've seen recently with Ashes of the Singularity Escalation. AMD has a heap of game developers in their back pocket thanks to their console connections, so I expect future AAA titles to work much better with the Ryzen CPUs than those we currently have, and hopefully we'll see this in the not too distant future. Well, that's all for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed the benchmarks. If you did, hit that like button for me. I appreciate the support. And as always, I enjoy hearing from you guys, so drop a comment below. Uh, and also, do not forget we have that insane custom-built Ryzen 7 1800X gaming system giveaway running at the moment. You still have a little over two weeks to enter if you haven't done so already. But yeah, why wait? Do it now! I don't know, guys. I'm your host, Steve. I'll catch you again soon.